now that you exercise, your sleep quality is getting better. Now you think clearer. Testosterone is higher. Now you're more competitive. Now you want to be better than all the other people in your department. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it just keeps paying dividends in, in all these subtle ways. And then, yeah. and you know, now you have this different, what's the word, aura. Hello, you are listening to the Quality Cup Life Podcast. My name is Imani. And here we talk about basic life skills for young adults, things that we all should freaking know. (laughs) And we talk about it through financial literacy, physical and emotional well-being, and understanding relationships. But in these, this little collection of episodes, we are talking about the physical well-being aspect. We're looking at life through the lens of health. You have to take care of your own self, your your health, to even be able to function and do anything and learn how the world works as a young adult. And so that is what we are doing in these next few episodes. So please go ahead and get your cup ready. Pour something hopefully healthy into it. You got to pour into your own cup first. You got to take care of yourself. And let's get into the show. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Quality Cup Life Podcast. My name is Imani. And um, today... We are talking to a very special guest, and um, so the theme for the next few episodes, or the next, whatever this is episode is sitting in between, we're talking about health, and hopefully some very, hopefully some of this content will help you think about things a different, a different way, and think about your health more, and being a little more intentional with that, and so we have this special guest today. You guys, let's welcome Jihad. Thank you for having having me on. Hello, hello. <laughs> welcome, welcome. How are you doing today? I am doing well, and yourself? Doing very well. I can't complain. Blessed, you know. I'm alive, above the ground, breathing, mm-hmm. sweating a little bit, but you know, I'm sure it's nothing compared to you're in Florida, right? Yes. Yeah. What does that feel like? Um, it's, it's like a fair trade for no, you know, snow or anything. So it, for real, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. Yeah. You're okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take, I'll take the extra heat over the snow. Okay. So you would rather melt than freeze. It, exactly. Yes. exactly. <laughs> yes. I'm not bad at it. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm the same way. Cause I don't like being cold and I'm cold all the time. So it's, really because it's bad for, for a uh, business. Hmm. It's bad for business. What the the snow or the heat? The snow. The snow. Yes, if you need people to, to come into your place of business to you know do the work that you got to do, and it's snowing, they're not really trying to come in. It's not safe for them to drive there, so it's like oh, I'm losing money today. So true, true. So I see why. Um, I see why this is. There's so many uh, online programs coming up now because of stuff like that. Yes, I can totally, I totally see it, for sure, for sure. That's cool. All right, so this is that. That was a little bit <laughs> off the cuff, a little bit, uh, but I hope everybody who is listening, watching, is doing as well as as we are today. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah. So, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, I am a fitness and nutrition coach. So that's like a fancy way of saying an online personal trainer. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the services you would render in person to a client. Um, I have I've recently started all, all offering those online mm-hmm. as, as uh, well. And I'm also still an in-person trainer. Okay. Okay. So you have a little bit of this, a little bit of that for everybody. There's no excuse. Yes. They can come get some of, some of this, some of this training. Yes, yes. There, there's always going to be a way for me to work with you somehow. So, okay. So if if you really want it, you can you know get it. So that's cool. He said there is no excuse. Come and get this. Come get this smoke. Come get this work. And get your body, get your body right. Get your get your your mind right. All I of the yes. all the things. <laughs> that's what's up. That's what's up. That's cool. And how um how old are you? I'm twenty eight. 28. Okay, cool, cool. So y'all, he is he is our age. That's what's up. That's what's up. Cool, cool, cool. And so, um, and then you are from, you're in Florida right now, but you're from New York, right? Yes. Did you start doing this stuff, the, the training in New York? 
In New York, yes. That was in New York. Where, where I started doing it. Mm -hmm. The first oh. thing was the was the in-person training. And then within the last three years, that was when the transition to online services kind of you know, started during mm -hmm. the lockdown. Maybe. Right. That's when everybody in their mom, sister, cousin came out with an online business for yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah, that was always the the uh, the uh, plan, though, mm -hmm. was a little bit of a ceiling for the personal training stuff. So it was it was always in my head at some point I was going to have to transition online in some form. Mm -hmm. The lockdown ended up kind of, you know, moving that timeline along. Yeah. Quicker. For sure. For sure. Every and that was when all the everybody had to adjust with the um working from home and all that stuff was becoming more popular and pe people were were getting that PPP loan and everything. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody everything had to Everything it's fortunately, you 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 wouldn't need that to start the online trainer stuff, so you don't got to get in get you know in any hot water with those going. Yeah, stuff. but you know, some people was ready to get into the hot water yeah. quick yeah. <laughs> and use the money quick, and, and now people going to jail and and everything. But we not going we not going to talk about that. <laughs> but um, <laughs> so what uh, what tickles your fancy? I'm gonna use that because I like to I like to say tickle your fancy the most about seeing uh doing this type of work and seeing people change and transform what what does it what does it for you so in in regards to the transformation well that that overall process it mm -hmm. feels good to me because i love training myself and i get like this positive reinforce positive reinforcement like um biochemically you know we get the endorphins and the dopamine and i've noticed that i that I get that benefit when I'm helping somebody else get mm -hmm. more fit too. Okay. Uh, the other aspect is, you know, sometimes they'll be transparent enough to tell me how it's helped them. And all that stuff gives me a nice little dopamine hit. Mm -hmm. So I'm just chasing a, a healthy way to get that, get that feeling. Okay. And cool. Then, cool. Uh, then the money I'm making is a plus, of course. Yeah, we like we like money. Money is always dopamine, uh <laughs> dopamine. dopamine. Yeah, that's always a good incentive too. So can you uh can you explain a little bit to my people who may it the the biochemically and the endorphins and dopamine that may sound like um Japanese to them. Can you explain a little bit what that means? Yes. So at the more conscious level, you don't really feel like getting up doing the physically strenuous stuff. You don't feel like running Absolutely. or lifting. But once you start start going, you got the momentum and you finish that that workout mm -hmm. your brain actually rewards you with that very positive feeling you feel really good about yourself mm -hmm. so that's that's kind of what the after effects of the dopamine and the endorphins are mm -hmm. so it was just kind of a fancy way of me saying that that feel good feeling that, that, that uh -huh. you do once you're once you're done training or while you're training too mm -hmm. Wow, 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 your training. That sounds like some 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 advanced level stuff. Yes, I, I've was, never I've was, never felt that good. Oh, oh, wow. the, the workout itself becomes the like dopamine. Like you're just in the zone and you're just hmm. mid workout. Okay, I can see like, that. Like, I can you see have that. to work up to some some pretty tough stuff to really get that type of feeling though. Yeah, because I don't get that. I, I never out. You're just starting out doing quarter push-ups or something. You aren't going to get that feeling. Yeah, you're going to feel pain, and you're like, ah, I'm done. I'm ready to to stop because that's, <laughs> yeah, for sure. I I when I when I uh, used to exercise a lot more and stuff, I wouldn't feel it until after the fact. I'm like, okay, whoo, I did it. Like, I I got this. I yeah, I got this. But during it, it didn't happen too often. Uh, I let me look. I'm lying a little bit. When I used to play soccer and we ran, I used to really like running. It was I. It's something about running was just made me feel like I was doing something. So I feel that. But the the strength training, it's a. I never felt any of that. <laughs> At all. <laughs> um. So. So. You, I know you were in the military. I, I'm Stefan. Tell me a little bit about your business. You were in the military, right? <laughs> yes, I was in the Marine Corps for seven years total. Oh, you were a Marine. Mm -hmm. I was thinking you were Navy. Oh no, 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 no. Because <laughs> I know the Marine Corps, it ain't. There's no, it's nothing to play with. Okay, okay, Marine. 
So did you did you see fitness the same way when you were a Marine? Or did it switch a little bit when you became um So what it was, I originally started the consistent weight training at 16. There was a girl I was trying to impress. Okay. And then That's a good way to do it. throughout the course of that last year of my I guess 12th 12, 12, 12th grade year. Uh-huh. Um a, a, re, a recruiter came up to me talking about the Marine Corps, and I already thought about joining the military. And then mm-hmm. I found out that the toughest branch, that the hardest branch to get into. But also, if you become a Marine, like you pass that that uh, test, mm-hmm. you could switch over to any branch whenever you want. Well, hmm. I mean, say whenever you want, but you could just switch to another branch. Mm-hmm. All the other branches, they still got to go through our thing to earn our title. Mm-hmm. So, okay. So it was kind of the fitness challenge element of it that really drew me to it. Mm -hmm. So just finding out they had a harder martial standard, I found that um, attractive. Mm -hmm. So, so I I had I had an intuition that their philosophy towards fitness was probably the best one. I can see that. So once I kind of started drifting towards the military thing. I kind of tweaked my approach to fitness. And then once I ended up actually joining, then, you know, then you learn how they do things. I mean, you have to be strong. You got to be able to move fast and stuff because there's a lot they expect, you know, so. Yeah, I but, got you. I got but, you. Uh, I would say the difference between me being out and being in is it's probably slightly less cardio emphasis that I put on myself now. Mm-hmm. And that only really went up once I started doing like, you know, boxing stuff here and there. That's when I would really start to mix more cardio in. Because if you don't do cardio, mm-hmm. you have a very bad time. Okay. Okay, I can see that. I can see that. Because um, I don't know a whole lot about the military or Marines, but I know Air Force chilling. I know they, a lot of Air Force people have like office jobs. It's like chill kind of. Okay, that's cool, cool. And that's that's very interesting that you considered it because of um you knew that it would be like a physical challenge for you. Is that right? Yes. That's pretty that's pretty neat. That's pretty neat. Um so what this is switching gears a little bit from uh the question about the military, but um so what what do you think when you see a lot of your peers going down an unhealthy path and kind of this may sound, I don't know if y'all gonna like this, but taking your kids with you, cause it, it. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that. Eating the, the same food, you know. Um, uh, yeah, for sure. It's, it, it is horrible. And, um, and I'm, I, I'm developing a more negative perception of it the older that I get. Like it's becoming less, as more time goes by, the less fathomable it is to me. Mm-hmm. See, in an adult. You know, because you really do know that that, well, maybe you don't know the full depth of it, but you know that you're doing damage. And it was like, your kid is like what, somewhere between five and 14 years old. They're overweight, you know. Oh, like, okay. You, know, yeah. you, you, are, you are really screwing them over. Yeah. Like, I'm talking about screwing them over to a degree that I probably can't even fully put in into words because there's so many different problems that you're creating. So. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's very uh un, unfortunate. But you yeah. know, I mean I, that's the thing, I, I don't even know what I could really blame it on though. Like I couldn't even find one thing to say this is why it's happening, but it's it's pre- pretty sad that it's happening. I don't think it's one thing. I think it's like multiple factors for sure. And I think that it's like subconsciously, you know, it's damaging, but like if are you the world is moving so fast and like it sometimes it feels like it's is go 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 even though it's not but your mind can kind of trick you and you feel like you might not uh have the time or have the resources or have the whatever and there's so many things that are made easily accessible these days so it's it's easy easily accessible and then just to do better it requires more effort in pretty much anything if you want to do make better decisions, you're gonna to have to uh, push a little bit more to to 
to do that. Whereas whatever is easy or not so great or whatever, it's right there waiting for you. It's on a it's on a silver platter. Go ahead, pick it up. We got. And then and then also before we um, you know move on to the next um, topic, it's just also something about our our food. There's something about the food here mm-hmm. because I, I have I have clients that travel to uh, like Europe for a while. Mm-hmm. Might not have access to a gym or anything, and they're eating whatever they want to eat, and they still come down. They, they still come back weighing less. So there's there's a little bit of a, I'd say, like a poison effect going on right now, and that's part of the problem. So it's it's sedentary on part of each person, but mm-hmm. at, at a much higher level, there's like you know the food is being messed with. You are definitely not the first. The third, fourth, fifth, or person or sixth person who I've heard say that. Uh yeah. I, yeah, I was just um what's today? Monday. On Saturday I was just doing a um y'all watch out for this podcast. It's gonna come out before this one. Um so if you aren't if you haven't listened to it or watched it, go check that one out. But uh I was just talking to uh one of my classmates and he's really into herbs and stuff and he was talking about how the food is being messed with i was just like Ooh, which is i i believe so because it's it's i don't know i something about american america and the food industry i just it seems like things are a lot more heavily processed here than other places it's it's crazy it's crazy um and even stuff down to like um he was talking about the soil Soil is different here. He was or certain places, and he was just talking about how like a lot of wild fruits are much smaller, but the stuff you get at the grocery store is much bigger because they'll like fiddle with the, the plants' genetics and all kinds of all yes, kinds of stuff. On, so. on the the uh, fruits, mm-hmm. um, if you compare probably a fruit now to one maybe sixty years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it has less nutritional density. Like you might need to eat multiple oranges mm-hmm. to get the nutritional value of maybe one orange from the 1950s or the 60s or something. That's wild. I got some frozen blueberries from Whole Foods, and I, there were like the regular organic ones, and then there was the organic wild wild blueberries. And I was like, hmm, I wonder what the wild blueberries are like. And so I bought it, and I took it home, and I made a smoothie, and they were like. They were really tiny, but the regular blueberries that I'm used to getting, not well, they're they're organic, but they're not wild, and they're like like the regular size of a blueberry that most people see or expect. And I thought that was so interesting. I was I was like, hmm, I wonder why the wild ones are so tiny and the other ones are are not. But it's making me think about things a little bit more. So that's uh, that's very interesting. Speaking of the parents with people with uh, our age, since a lot of people have kids nowadays, what would you say like as an encouraging word for people who have kind of fallen off maybe into not the best path and with their kids, what would you say to like kind of encourage them a little bit? Well, since you're the leader, you set the tone for everything. So you Mm -hmm. can start by, you know, filling your refrigerator with better, better foods, Mm -hmm. trying to, encouraged by you know by example a more active lifestyle Mm -hmm. Um, so you know stop being so for yourself and for your family um so accepting of that sedentary lifestyle Mm -hmm. so kind of leverage your authority as a parent to develop those healthy habits now so it doesn't take so much willpower when your children are older and then you're, you're getting that same benefit of making yourself more healthy at the same time. Okay. So you said put healthier and better foods in your fridge. What is what is what do you mean by healthy and better foods? Fruits, vegetables, mm-hmm. lean meat, um, mm-hmm. chicken, you know, steak, salmon, um, tuna. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say. If you're trying to lose weight, you could probably do the low fat version, mm-hmm. but I would say whole fat dairy, you know, mm-hmm. eggs is good for you. I mean, um, if, if if some medical professional or something is saying avoid eggs, you should be a little skeptical. Yeah, I've heard it say. <laughs> I, I, that's my favorite thing. I've eaten that almost every day for the last like 12 years almost. Mm-hmm. I do not play about my eggs. <laughs> so. 
Yeah. So fruits, veggies, lean meats, whole whole fat dairy, um, whole whole grains. So, like if you like eating eating uh, bread, I would say keep it to a minimum. But mm-hmm. a whole wheat bread would be you know better. I would say stay away from the bagels. I, would, mm-hmm. I looked at the ingredients one day and it's like there's a lot of stuff in there. You should probably. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. They, they sneak everything in the uh, in the in our most American treasured foods. And it's one of them is bread. They'll sneak a lot of stuff in there and they know you're going to buy it anyway. Yep. And then also um, potatoes is mm-hmm. okay. um, depending on how you make it. So don't throw a bunch of cheese and bacon in it. Of course, you know, mm-hmm. like roasted potatoes. Um, and what else? Rice, preferably brown. Mm-hmm. So I'll say okay. those, are the, those are the main things that you should be focusing on. Okay. And then you use the word sedentary lifestyle. Can you explain what that means? So that's like sitting at a desk the whole day when you're working you mm-hmm. work in front of the television, mm-hmm. in front of your laptop. So it's basically where you're like a, it's like a, uh, what's the word? It's like a euphemism for sitting all the time. Okay. You know, we, we evolved to be walking around chasing game. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you, you should be trying to mimic that. And then when you do it, your brain and your hormonal system will reward you for it. Okay. So so, so why is that important? Because you're using words like, because I understand what you're saying, but I think somebody else might not, um, who might not have um, learned about much of this stuff quite yet, why is that important for you, for your hormones to reward you and for your brain to be better and for you to get out of this sedentary lifestyle? Why is that so important for us today? So you're referring specifically to like your hormone composition? kind of. Just or, 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 I'm speaking or, or, in like a, a general sense, all the stuff that you named about, you were talking about uh, our bodies were, are used to us or expect us mm-hmm. to um, not be sitting down all day and Yes. Out here chasing and hunting down squirrel and rabbit and whatever else game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you're talking about so, how so, our so what, what it is. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so, so the main root of it is probably just overall health. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you you would think of physical activity as something you do for your physical health, but the but your mind is connected to your you know body. Mm-hmm. So there's there's the mental benefits to it. So. When, when, when you're when you're exercising, you're also reminding nature that, you know, what what she's given you or what he's given you, depending on how, how you how you perceive nature, mm-hmm. um, that you that you need it, you appreciate it and you want to keep it because if you, mm-hmm. whatever you don't use is going to be taken from you. So I'm, I'll, 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 give, okay. I'll, I'll give you an yes. example for this. All right. So I was working with a man who's about my age. Mm-hmm. And uh, so he was trying to, to lose weight. I was doing like a mixed program with him. So we would do some heavy lifting, but we also do explosive high intensity cardio type of workouts as well. We would we would mm-hmm. mix them up the same workout. And then I had asked him if he could make this this uh, this uh, jump. He had one of those those jumping boxes. He said, OK, he I've seen those said that he wasn't sure. And then he was able to. To, you know make it but it mm-hmm. took him so it, it it got me thinking i was like hold up i haven't done any, any, any jumps for a while uh-huh. and, and if if i if i don't go back to doing them you know it's gonna get taken from me right under my nose like it's gonna happen so slowly you won't be able to pinpoint the moment you lost the ability to do it mm-hmm. so but you can apply that to anything you could apply it to running fast like you like you aren't gonna for stop sure. running for 20 years and then hit the freaking road, do a high intensity cardio session, you'll mess around, tear something. Yeah. So for sure. You know, whatever you don't want taken from you, you need to use it. Eat that also refers to uh overhead mobility as well. Mm-hmm. I'll see some people they can't really get their arms over their head very well. That's like, crazy. Like just not doing that as you get older, you'll lose the ability to do it. It's gonna take a lot of concentration just to get your arm in a full overhead position yeah which a, which a three-year-old could do effortlessly i was just about to say yo you took words right out of my mouth because i was i was just thinking i was picturing as you was talking a baby in the womb they're like all balled up and bent up and stuff and babies can 
put their toe in their mouth and it's like it's nothing. They'll just be the you turn around and they in the back seats mm-hmm. with their toe in their <laughs> in their mouth. Or uh they can do split, they can do all kind of stuff, but if you don't continue to stretch and stuff like that, like it's it's a no go. You can't do any of that. I definitely can't. I yeah, yes. but that's that's so crazy though. Yeah, most of us were fortunate enough to be born with that ability. Mm-hmm. But we gotta have the discipline to to keep it, going. To keep it for as long as you know possible. Yeah. And then and then in the process of do, of doing these things, it'll increase your you know confidence. Mm-hmm. Um, the the you know training itself will you know it, it it will force your body to produce certain hormones. Like when you yeah. when you're lifting weights. You know, your body has to produce some testosterone. And then these things will they'll affect how you walk. They'll affect how you talk. They'll affect, you know, how ambitious you you are, how competitive. Mm-hmm. So you when you kind of really do start to take your health more seriously, wanting to get stronger and more flexible and faster, mm-hmm. it, it ends up carrying over to the more non-physical aspects of life, even if you have a more in, in, a more in, in intellectually inclined field of work it can mm-hmm. still benefit because now, now 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 that you exercise your sleep quality is getting better now you think clearer testosterone is higher now you're more competitive now you want to be better than all the other people in your department mm-hmm. so it, it, it just keeps paying dividends and in, in all these subtle ways and then yeah. and you know now you have this different what's the word aura yeah Okay. So so now sometimes, you know, if you get really fit, people just start conversations with you. That is true. Random person just walk up, compliment you. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a lot of hidden benefits too. Yeah. They walk up to you, "Hey man, how much you live? What you what you do?" Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. When you were um when you were talking, I was thinking about um um that it's easier like on the front end i mean it looks more difficult i guess but but it's easier to keep it up on the front end whatever you're doing than it is to try to backpedal i don't know if it, if that makes sense yes. yeah. to to it's easier to maintain those skills and it works better for you than it is to have to lose the skills and then have to get them back it's a lot more work um Whereas if you just keep up with like a routine and, and maybe add a little bit more on um, over time, like you don't have to do a bunch of sweating and huffing and puffing and all the things just to get the scale back. So that's a really that's a really good um, that's a really good point. I think you said it, but I just want to repeat it for the people who uh, who maybe didn't catch it. You're going to catch it today. And then also um, <laughs> how I touched on how the abilities that you had that you were, you were born with, you would want to keep them for as long as you know possible. Mm-hmm. Um, your your fertility, the quality of your gametes, you know, whether it's, you know, semen or the, you know, eggs, um, that's an extension of your health. Mm-hmm. So if you want mm-hmm. kids in the future and you want them to be healthy, you need to be eating better food. You've got to be sleeping better and you've got to be exercising. Mm-hmm. So if 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 you if you're gonna really play around with your you know health, um, the kids can in, inherit some of that, some of those 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 problems. Yeah, yeah, so, for sure. So if so if, if you want to be comfortable in your own body, just doing day to day stuff, mm-hmm. exercising. If you want to give birth to healthy children and raise them to be healthy, you need to be exercising. Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure. Um, I think it's it's interesting how um, uh, people are willing to like gamble that type of thing, though, for the convenience or the the. Because I mean, being 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 young adults, like you find out real quick, life is life is life in right now. Life is is not is no joke. You got it's bills, kids, rent, car. It's like I'm like God, Lee. Like where where all this stuff coming from? It's, it gets real, and it's like 10x that when you have a kid. And so life it can be job, it can be moving so fast, and um, it's just um, sometimes life can be a lot, and it's kind of heavy at times, and and uh, stuff like that. And 
And I think it's so easy for um, when stuff feels so heavy, it's easy for us to like um, find things that are comforting. And a lot of people find comfort in food. Um, and and I think I think it would be really great if people found more comfort in their future and putting more into their future and um, thinking about the future of their kids or possible kids or their own future, being able to be healthier. Um, and just thinking about tomorrow, like what you do today affects tomorrow. It affects the day after that, the day after that. And um, I just really hope that um, if you're listening to watch this, you can uh, start to think about that. I know it's kind of, since you can't see it and touch it right now, it's kind of hard, but just kind of start to think about that kind of thing. Yeah, so to build on what you just you know, just uh, just uh, said, so mm -hmm. you say how choosing, you know, life can get heavy, and so you choose comfort. The mm -hmm. problem is then you get weaker, so that load just got heavier. And then you create... No, you didn't. And you're, you're creating, a, <laughs> like, like, this negative feedback loop because you're getting more and more stressed. Y'all like, hear the from snaps? Life being, from, from, <laughs> From life being heavier, uh -huh. then, you, then you pull back into comfort more. Yeah. It keeps getting worse. You better preach, sir. Okay, that was a bar. It, it's like you you are you are using the, almost the same amount, maybe maybe more willpower mm -hmm. just by choosing comfort over and over again than you would if you would just started the exercising and eating better. Mm-hmm. Oh man, he came came for the neck, the jugular. <laughs> okay, that was a bar. That was a bar. Okay, sir. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's real. That's real. That's real. The more you delay it, the more it piles up. The heavier the load gets. Yes. And a lot of times, the worse you feel. And then sometimes, the more you seep exactly. into the comfort, and then the cycle continues. Exactly. So, oh, man. And, and, and anyone that's listening right now that that's you know been on the fence about the whole fitness stuff and eating better and you know sleeping better, the best time was was yesterday. The second best time is now, and the worst time is tomorrow. You so, better come on, sir. So, yes, get on that <laughs> today, please. Today. Yes. Today. Okay. Okay. Uh, I just got. I be seeing pictures of things in my head. Um, and what I saw when um, when you were talking was that's what happens when, like, if you ever see, I think it's on TLC. The show's called Hoarders. Oh my God, the show is a it's 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 a horror show. You ever seen Hoarders? Just like a tiny bit. Like I probably never sat through a full a full episode, but I I get the gist of it. It's rough, and it's just like if it is rough, and if you can just like just little by little just pick. Just put something in the trash, like it would be. It would. It would help. It helps little by little. Um, but but those people, most episodes, those people are very severely depressed and they have like a lot of trauma from the past. And so it just, it it they just those people just are having a really rough time. Um, understandably so, because just some of the stuff that you actually hear the person's real story, you're like, ooh, they had a really traumatic experience. And so I, it's, 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 it, life is real. Um, but if those people just like little by little, just start put stuff in the trash, like cleaning out the litter box or whatever, it wouldn't get as bad. We got to have a whole TV show to come in and clean up the mess and stuff is, it's, is rough. So y'all know you don't want the inside of your body to look like the inside of a hoarder's. <laughs> yes. It's, it's, hoarder it's, show. it's like a, it's like a physical manifestation of, developing that much momentum in the yeah. wrong direction so now it's so much more work to fix it yeah yeah for sure for sure cool cool i like it i like it i like it um <laughs> the so what do you think gets people stuck the most I'm talking about um stopping them from even actually starting or when when they're in it when they've started we're gonna go with starting when, when they're starting it, mm -hmm. uh, I, I would think it would just be their, well, one, it would be the actual habits. They aren't used to, you know, doing this. So they're meeting this mental resistance to, to go up against the habits they already formed. Mm -hmm. And it, it'll also be a lack of knowledge, you know, not really knowing what to do. 
Mm -hmm. Because you, you already have the issue of not wanting to do it in the first place. True. So you don't want to do it in the first place. And then you're not sure if you're doing it in a way that's going to work. Mm -hmm. So now you really kind of just want to say, all right, screw this. I'm going to go back to sit, sitting down and yep. just chilling. So. Yeah, I'm going back to sleep. I'm chilling. I'm scrolling. We good. <laughs> so it would do okay. pre-existing habits and not, not knowing for sure exactly what to do. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. I can see that. I can see that. Cause if you, it's, I think the average is what people say. It's like 21 days. People do 21 days for an, for a habit to really, um, I forget what it's called in your brain for your brain to stack up whatever it is in your brain, to develop a habit. Neurological pathways. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, I've heard, I think it's somewhere around 21 days. It takes that long for you to, for you to go from having to force yourself to becoming more of a habit and becoming more like muscle memory. So I can see why um, people, it's, it, you got to push. I can see why, I can see the, the, the struggles. So what do you think about once you're in it? What keeps people from, why do you, why do you think um, people stop all of a sudden? Well, they, well, I think part of it, if I had to pick one major thing, it might be the lack of a why. Mm -hmm. They might not have a reason important enough to them to do it religiously. Mm -hmm. I say, Can you expand upon that? Well, when I say do it religiously, I'm going to say three to four times per per um, per uh, week, I would say. If you really want to maintain, well, make your health better and maintain it say three to four times, you should probably try to work up to and fit into your life. Mm -hmm. um, but you you don't always want to do it. I mean, what? I mean, you might drag yourself to, you know, whatever workout center that you're going to. And once you start going, then it's fine. But that morning or that night, once you get off work, you, you mm -hmm. don't really want to do it. Mm -hmm. when, that, when that moment comes, you're going to need to rest on that why to keep mm -hmm. you going. So I would say that's the main thing. Um, and also, it, it, it isn't so bad to want some form of enjoyment out of the workout routine that you're you know, following. There's mm -hmm. so much variety to how you can do this type of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say um, play around with the different methods of you know, training, the different methods of cardio, the different strength training approaches. Mm -hmm. Find one that works for you that you derive the most enjoyment out of, because mm -hmm. that, that's another way to keep you on track. Like if it's if it becomes your like ha your happy place, mm -hmm. you might have to talk yourself down and say, "All right, I need to take a day off." Yeah. So if you're fortunate enough to find that method of training, you're almost mm -hmm. golden. Okay, cool, cool. I like it. I like it. That's very that's very true. If it's something you actually like to do, you'll go. Yes, yes, but you but might be like, "Ooh." Yeah, well, I, I'm tired, like but I'm going. Add, I would like to add that the lack of enjoyment is not an excuse to neglect your, you know, health, because it's gonna mm -hmm. affect whoever your your romantic partner is. It's gonna affect your, you know, children. So, mm -hmm. so even if that's lacking, you still kind of have to stay on top of it. True, true, true. I wanna, I wanna ask you a question about you mentioned not having a strong enough why. Can you, can you explain? How do you pinpoint a strong enough why? Like, what does that mean? You, it, 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 it's probably not something that, that you pick. It's, it's probably something that you, you would have to find like internally. Mm -hmm. So I have, I have one client who comes to my mind, like immediately. Mm -hmm. um, she really loves her husband, like a lot. Like, mm -hmm. like when I was working, I was like, Oh, does she really love her husband? <laughs> but after after working with her and finding out some things, and it was like, oh, you know what? I I I don't even blame you. Like, like, oh, like he sounds like an oh, amazing oh, guy. Oh, that praise she was giving him was like earned several times over, <laughs> and she wants him to have a very beautiful, fit wife. Okay. So that's that's the immediate example that uh -huh. comes up to 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 my head. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say my my why um. I, I want to have this holistic approach to to fitness. Like I, since I, I've been in, in in the Marine Corps, I have like it, it creates a permanent imprint on your mind. Mm -hmm. So it's like yeah, I'm chilling. Florida's nice, 
But what if it stopped stop being nice? Mm-hmm. Like, can I run fast enough? Am I physically strong enough to do what I would have to do if the world just, you know, went off the freaking deep end? Yeah. So <laughs> I'm reinforcing a, a, you know, piece of, of, um, of our mind that if, you know, the veneer of civilization just dissolves somehow, my body is at least, you know, prepared for it. You know, like I, I wouldn't be just a helpless little, you know, prey animal or something. Yeah. I feel that you like, I'm ready. If the purge happens, let's yeah. go. I got it. <laughs> yes, I, had, I had another woman, one of my earliest clients, um, I got her. She had had a heart attack. Ooh. And then that was when she started to really get into the fitness stuff. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you had that brush with, you know, death. So that kind of woke, 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 woke her up. Yeah, yeah, that'll that'll do it. That's isn't that so funny though that a lot of times we have to um that we have to feel pain to get right. Ain't that ain't that crazy? Like a lot of times most of us are pushed by pain. It's very few people who are like, yeah, I just want to be better. Like just because most people you in some pain, that's why you here. <laughs> so which is I mean, but I mean, but I mean, it's not a bad thing though, necess- necessarily. It's but it's much better for you to try to do that before you get you get socked in the face real good and your nose broken before you want to. You know what I'm saying? Before you want to get right. So I think that's 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 so fascinating to me. Um, un- unfortunately, you know, there's just there's just some of us here that you know we we have we have to feel the heat first. Oh yeah. So. Yep. We got we gotta we gotta. We gotta get cooked. We gotta get tossed in the pan and 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 sit around a little bit before we yeah. before, <laughs> before you know, we yeah, get jump, right. Jump out of it. Yeah, before we like ah, let me get up. <laughs> I feel it. I feel it. Okay, okay. So my next thing that I want to ask you. Um, so, I mean, I kind of asked you this before, but this is a little bit more um, detailed of a question. Um, but what would you say or what would you say for people who um, who have kids around our age that I didn't mention my age in this episode? I'm 26. I'll be 27 next month. So um, but anyway, so for people around our age that have kids and they're they uh, may say that they don't have as much money for healthier food options or they don't have as much motivation or they just don't know where to start. You got some quick little uh, so, jihadisms. I mean, I mean, if they picked apart their actual budget, mm-hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm almost certain there's something that they don't need in there mm-hmm. to make some more room for the healthier foods. Mm-hmm. Um, if they say it's a time problem, I'm not buying it at all. <laughs> uh, like you, you, do, you could probably scrape up enough money to get some stuff you could work out with in the house. Mm-hmm. Um, you probably have a nice little road you, you you could start running down like you 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 could just go to sleep 30 minutes earlier mm-hmm. get up 30 minutes earlier mm-hmm. get a quick run in mm-hmm. um, you, you, you could buy a doorway pull up bar perfect push up um like a little dip stand to do dips mm-hmm. like I'm, I'm really not trying to hear it like at all <laughs> like it's like I'm, I'm telling you, like some sometimes i'll really get like uh carried away with my like routine like i'm just in a different state of mind i'll squeeze in extra little workout sessions mm-hmm. those, those extra sessions are only 30 minutes uh-huh. so okay. they, they could really get what they want to get done done in 30 minutes jaha said i'm not trying to hear none of your excuses yeah. you can you can kick oh, well, those to the I'll, end. so i have some i have some people they'll they'll say um you know i go into work at nine and i may not get off till six or seven or i might not get home till seven or eight o'clock or you know Mm -hmm. um and then i'll I'll say all right then well the gym opens at at five so what's 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 the problem what's up (laughs) exactly like um i mean so you're you're telling me you get off work too late to to come after Mm -hmm. start work you know you might only you might start as early as seven but that's an hour unaccounted for that you mm-hmm. could be in here put in some, you know, work in. Mm-hmm. You don't even really have to be here. You could do the exercises at home. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool. Jaws say you you what's the excuse? 
The gym mm-hmm. opens at five. Uh, you can hire me as your trainer. I'll meet you at five. What's yes. up? Do, do you want it or not? So. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I I got you. I got you. And there's um. I mean, to be real. To be real, there are uh um. I think I said this earlier, but the the easier cheaper like the the less healthier more processed foods are typically cheaper and the healthier things are usually a little bit more but um so i can i can understand that but also it's like which is more are you is is you investing in your health your future your children important to you because if it is then like you can you can adjust some things to make some room. Exactly. I mean, in in South Carolina, we got Aldi, we got, I think it's Lidl or Lidl. It's like, it's almost like save a lot. It's real. It's a stupid cheap grocery store. They have some decently, you know, priced and decently healthy options in there. Uh, I mean, it's, I mean, I'm bougie, so my grocery list is a little bit more expensive, especially where I like, I said earlier, I'd be in Whole Foods all the time. Um, but when I wasn't going there and I was still going to Walmart, I hate Walmart. Don't do that anymore. Um, <laughs> I still chose the, um, food shopping? Mm-hmm, for my food shopping. I still would try to go, um, uh, stay a lot of times on the perimeter of the groceries. Cause in the middle of the aisles where all the, all the heavily processed and yes. sugar down and things that have your blood pressure through the roof is in the middle usually. So, um, so yeah, it, you know. If you if it's really important to you, then you know you're gonna make it make it shake one way or another. And then also there's a, the other facet to it is that you're getting what you pay for. Like if like you like you really don't want to try to talk, try to cut corners on the fuel you're giving your body yeah. and the nutrients or the lack thereof. Yeah. So it's and you know, it's kinda it's kinda easy for me to say it as a childless man. But mm-hmm. I, I don't even know if if that is totally true, because I mean I, I would probably want want my want my children to have the, the healthier foods. I'm not trying to you know set them down the wrong path. But like like that has to be like a a priority. Like you really have to do take you have to take an honest assessment of what you can do without to make the room for that healthier stuff. Yeah, because it's, you- it's it's definitely gonna like that's a bill that's gonna come due later. So. That is very true. That's a very true. And it's either you figure out what you, uh, like you said, do without or figure out what you need to do additionally. Um, so that's a, that's a good point. Go ahead and snap again for you, sir. Um, so I hear you are a bookworm like me. What, what, what kind of books are you into? All right. I bounce around a lot. So, um, uh-huh. do tell, do tell. Uh, mm-hmm. like, I'll be listening to philosophy. Um, like, you know, Friedrich Nietzsche, um, political philosophy. Um, also, those self-development books. So, you know, How to Win Friends, Influence People, uh, Law of Love, Success. Um, Napoleon Hill, I like him a lot. So it was the Law of Success. Think in, that's, in, that's the Think and Grow Rich Man. Yeah. And, um, I listened to Outwitting the Devil a while back, and that was a pretty good one, too. So okay. that one... Um, I started that book, but didn't Any, anyone out here that, that has like the audiobook version, um, you should probably give it like at least one listen because it's a dialogue between him it and is. the devil. So it, it's 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 a, it's a little interesting to listen to versus like your typical self development book. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What else do I listen to? So, hold on, um, hold, on yeah. hold on for a second. Y'all, I'm going to give y'all a hack. It's free on YouTube. Out in the devil. That's where I was oh, listening to it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the hack. <laughs> That's the hack. Um, but finish it. Like, oh, I, I I didn't finish so, it, but y'all um, finish it. Go ahead. Mil- military history. Um, uh-huh. Biographies, typically um, military guys, you know, like Caesar or Napoleon or, you know. Um, John D. Rockefeller, too. So when I say, like, um, military guys, business is analogous to warfare. So, mm-hmm. uh, so I, I might you know, listen to an autobiography about a businessman as mm-hmm. well. Okay. So, um, I know Fifty Cent has two books out there. He's my favorite rapper, so I was obviously going hmm. to listen and read his, you know, books too. 
Okay, philosophy. We got personal development, a little pinch of fiction, okay. business. Okay. But I, I have, is it one? Oh, follow up to the book question. There's a reason why I asked you about the books. Y'all yeah, also stay locked in for a little bit. So does what you read, how does it affect how you see people and how you work with the people since you're very, um, uh, you have a very direct interaction with people? So it kind of helps me deal with people better, like, you know, how I should probably talk to them, how to encourage them mm -hmm. and how that might change and how it manifests from person to person. So okay. being able to identify which person will be most receptive to which type of coaching. Okay, cool, 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 cool. That makes sense. I, I got you. That makes sense. Cause I figured, I figured, since you, since I uh, hear you read so much, I'm, I figured that that would help you improve as a fitness and nutrition coach. So mm -hmm. you can figure out how to uh, deal with people better and understand them, and figure out how you can, like you said, be. Um, you didn't say this. I'm use the word persuasive. Persuade them. <laughs> to be able to persuade themselves to do what you need them to do. So that way they can get what they want, the results that they want. So that's, that's what's up. That's what's up. And then the very last thing, and then I'm gonna let you go <laughs> is, um, so, uh, I know you, you get everybody else, right. Get everybody else jacked and whatnot. How do you keep yourself motivated and disciplined with your own like health? I've been in, into the fitness thing for about 12, 12 years. So are you mm -hmm. talking about overall, or are you talking about at the present moment? Or do you want me to answer both? We're gonna start with both. You can do, but do the the overall or what helped you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Overall. So, so typically, so over the last eleven years, not eleven, twelve years, um, I I always had a why that was sufficient enough for me to be consistent. So mm -hmm. it started with the girl, then it switched. Oh yeah, to that's what I was about to say. <laughs> then it switched to getting ready for boot camp. Uh huh. Then it switched to I'm I'm, I'm I'm in boot camp, so I can't. I have to. I have to graduate, but I'm not. Not letting these people send me home without without that, you know, title. Yeah. Now I gotta maintain it because they, you know, test you every every six six months. And when you do the physical training, which they'll do consistently, you 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 are expected to always keep up with it. Mm -hmm. so I have to maintain it. Mm -hmm. And by that point, I already derived the enjoyment from the workouts. That mm -hmm. probably started in high school. Like it's like if I go, because I only have access to the gym Monday through Friday. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I would do do my lifting, but Saturday and Sunday, I can't do nothing. So mm -hmm. by Sunday, and this is when I was 17, like I'm getting a little bit of withdrawal. Like I'm I'm I'm, I'm feeling sad right now. I gotta get get some get some lifting in. Oh, you was feeding so, for the for the workouts? Yeah, so, yeah, so so by <laughs> so by about twelfth grade, I already started to get that, you know, itch. Okay. And, and it and it doesn't feel good once you get a taste of it uh -huh. to then choose to go without it. Like okay. it's like it. I mean, I could analogize it over to if you, you know, would smoke weed a whole lot and it would mess with your with your mind when you go a long time without, you know, smoking it. Yeah. A, a, a similar heard... thing can happen with the fitness. It's like, but it's for different reasons. You know, the weed is because it's used, you're used to being in that high state. Yeah, I've heard, I think I've heard um, that if you smoke all the time and then you stop, it'll mess up your dream. Uh, oh, shoot. It's some type of, is it REM sleep? It's something where you'll get a bunch of like super vivid uh, dreams and it can, I've heard it freaks people. I think I heard I, Joe Rogan or somebody. I don't know. I, I don't smoke. I don't know. But that's what I heard. <laughs> so, okay. It's like the same thing with, with, uh, with fitness, but for different reasons, because you, know, you consciously and intuitively know that you're taking care of your actual body. Mm -hmm. And now you have that, that mental and, and it's, it's involuntary, like this involuntary mental punishment, mm -hmm. you were taking care of your body and now you're not. So it really does mess with you when you, when you stop. So I developed that by about 12th grade. And that was something that kept me on track for most of these 12, 12 years. And then, you know, there, there might be something else that comes up that adds to it. Mm -hmm. I, might start, I might start working with with a boxing coach, so now I know cardio is important. So now I'm running more, or um, or um, I'd say for right now, 
um, since I'm I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna be thirty soon, and I kind of want to fight that aging process as much as possible. Mm-hmm. And um, I just so happen to find a routine that I enjoy, that I enjoy okay. so much. I'll have to force a rest day on myself. Okay. Like, I, like it's 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 like play. It's just as much play time mm-hmm. as in strength training and cardio. Mm-hmm. So now I'm on autopilot. It's 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 like it's like when you're a kid and it's the first day for the school year, so you're mm-hmm. excited to go go like go go back. Mm-hmm. So when it's, it's the, that's almost every single day now. <laughs> it's every day, bro. Yes, yeah, so it's like okay, I'm gonna add this little thing to make it a little more difficult. I'm gonna see if I can do it. And okay. then also, when you when you get more fit, when you get really fit, I mean, people are gonna come up to you and compliment you, ask you questions. So now, yeah. I'm getting an extra dopamine just from knowing once I start, once I'm in the middle of this workout, mm-hmm. I have two people coming to me asking, asking me questions or just complimenting the workout that I'm doing. Okay. So it's just so- I built I built this system of mental reinforcement visual reinforcement because you know I, I can look in the mirror and I can really see the changes mm-hmm. about other people be in the muscle I mean in the mirror like you be doing that kissing your biceps <laughs> some, some, sometimes sometimes okay but, yeah so now I just have all this positive reinforcement coming from so many different angles that now it's a self I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna quote Friedrich Nietzsche right now this is a self rolling wheel now okay like it's moving on its own like I okay it doesn't take any outside influence from me now. It's like I'm just alone for the ride. So how did you move from pretty girl, got to get right for her to to now like it's you don't need you don't need that anymore. So was that just like a catalyst and then once the wheel started moving, then yes. it turned into an automatic. What did you say rolling? What did you call a, it? A a self-rolling wheel. Yeah. Okay. So it because even though there was the catalyst initially was an ex, ex, external source. Mm-hmm. Um, you know the the whole brain chemistry thing that incentivizes it was still that's that's like still present. So that still um, gets built regardless of what the outside source is. Okay. So I started exercising all through the summer, um, not having access to heavy weight. And the school year starts, I have access to the heavy weight now. Mm-hmm. I can see a little bit of changes here and there. So it's like I want more. Mm-hmm. And then you get the opportunity to join the Marine Corps. And it's like, all right, let me see if I have what it takes to to join this organization that has this really uh, like good reputation of military and fitness excellence. Mm-hmm. And then just from 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 there, you just you know you have that outside pressure. I've got to meet that standard mm-hmm. as long as I'm I'm here. Mm-hmm. And I, I already got a taste of, of the mental high that you get from taking care of yourself. Mm-hmm. Right? So I still want that too. Mm-hmm. And then, then I was fortunate enough to find a routine that I enjoy doing that, you know, is just as much playtime as it is, you know, training. Okay. So, so I'm, I'm going to ask what, what everybody, I'm sure everybody else uh, wants to know. Inquiring minds want to know, did you get the girl? Oh no! No, <laughs> I actually did, did did not. Nope, we kind of drifted oh, apart over, over that over that uh that summertime. Oh man, I was like, oh, he got the girl. Oh man, okay. Nope. Uh, okay. she. I, I I actually think that she's dating somebody right now. I have her on Instagram. Okay, well, I bet she can see on Instagram. Oh, Jahai looking looking right. She she would have she would have been one of my personal training clients had I not moved. Oh, okay. she did not inquire until I had moved. So. Oh, well. All right. Well, thank you very much for uh, for joining today and uh, being willing to answer all the questions. And, and Absolutely. Thank you. Let me pick your brain a little bit. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, is there anything else you want to say to my people before we get out of here? Uh, yes. I just want to reemphasize because I only touched on it briefly. Mm-hmm. Um, your fertility is going to be an extension of your overall health. So mm-hmm. anybody that wants to have kids in the future, you get in healthy kids, really get 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 on that fitness stuff now. The sleep, the nutrition, really start to re reassess if you have those things, and set up in in a way that complements, you know, having healthy children. Mm-hmm. 
because you, you you really don't want to find out how, how bad your health is from fertility problems yeah 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 it's 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 devastating it's i've seen it be devastating for people who um who desperately want to have they finally get to a stable point in their life they're like i want to you know i'm settled down married kid you know got a husband got a wife or whatever i want to have some kids and then now they they want it desperately and can't like that's that's rough especially with the whole ivf thing you got to get take put shots in your in your belly or uterus whatever it is probably your uterus through your belly whatever it is also every for, day for, for that, please don't make ivf your actual plan because it because it costs a lot and, and those, those eggs are not guaranteed to to be viable yeah that's you could cough up a lot of money and end up with nothing yeah that's sad and then i know it's not it also can really i'm sure hurt my man's confidence if, if he has um what's it called ed yeah. 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 Or, yeah, so, yeah. If you have if you have that 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 type of problem, then you really need to get on top of your fitness, um, your sleep, and the food that you're eating as well. Yeah. So those are those are ways that you can also fix that fix that that uh, problem too. Yeah. No, so yeah. men 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 don't don't like training legs, but start 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 training. Legs. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. you, you don't, don't want to be big up top and have the pencil legs. You don't want to do that. It'll, it'll help you in a multitude. Uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 Well. Um. So, where can we find you online? Plug your your business. What's it called? Where can they find you? What you got? So I'm. Um, so I would normally get clients via via Instagram, uh, Facebook a little bit, but in, Instagram was my was the main platform where I would get potential clients for the online service. Mm -hmm. So that is J underscore Fit ninety four. So okay. if any, anybody had any any further questions about, you know, how to get themselves started, you can find find me there. And then I have a, a, a third party app that, that I use for my person, personal training service that I would mm -hmm. then invite you to to get, get you started on on those those uh, things. OK, so if, um, anybody have, have any questions, feel free to to send me a, a direct message. Mm -hmm. J underscore fit 94. Okay, he says slide in the DM. Okay, cool, cool. Go ahead, slide in the DM if you need some help. In a professional kind of way. Huh? In a professional kind of way. Okay, he said he's not looking for uh any any um flirtatious DMs. <laughs> uh, potential clients only, please. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. All right, well, thank you again. Go ahead and like, share if you found any of this helpful. Uh, thank y'all for listening and watching, and we'll catch y'all later. Bye. Right, thank you for having me on.